Naaman this morning. And if you like a title or something, don't miss who's at the door. There you go. That's exciting, isn't it? Naaman the leper. Second Kings chapter five. Now Naaman was the commander of the army of the king of Aram. He was a great man in the sight of his master and highly regarded. Because through him, the Lord had given victory to Aram. He was a valiant soldier, but he had leprosy. We all have limitations and labels, don't we? Naaman the leper, not Naaman the soldier, it's Naaman the leper. But he didn't let his limitations stop him. Amen, anyone? Naaman refused to follow the prophet's instructions because he was received by a servant at the door. He expected Elijah to come and Elisha, I knew I'd do it, <laughs> to heal him in a particular way. And we need at times to understand that God's way is indeed the best. And sometimes it hurts and sometimes it's a bit uncomfortable, but God's way is the best. Now, Naaman was a big shot in the country. And he wanted a big shot prophet to come and meet him and heal him of his leprosy. He wanted the prophet to come and jump around and sh shout and it be a big spectacle and a show for his healing to occur. It's Second Kings 5, picking up around verse 9. So Naaman went with his horses and chariots, not just an ordinary man, is he? And stopped at the door of Elisha's house. Elisha sent a messenger to say to him, Go wash yourself seven times in the Jordan, and your flesh will be restored, and you will be cleansed. Seems okay to me. Sorry, who are you? Sorry, uh, wh where's the prophet? Where's the guy in charge? He sends the messenger, the servant. Not good enough for Naaman. Verse 11, but Naaman went away angry and said, I thought that he would surely come out to me because I'm so special and so entitled and so needy and I've got leprosy. And stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and wave his hands over the spot and cure me of my leprosy. Looks like we're still naming the leper, eh? Naaman did not like the instructions he received go and wash in the jordan seven times that's what the prophet told me to tell you naaman did not like the solution he was given why is it so hard to do what god says in the way that god has told us to do it because we think we know best. Oh God, what about this? Oh God, I've got this brilliant idea. Friends, Naaman did not like the idea that he would have to put in some effort and do something to receive the result he had hoped for. Free of leprosy. Free of this curse upon his skin. Rather, he wanted Elisha the prophet to come and do something for him and to him. 
God gives us the solution he wants to see if we will obey and respond. Naaman in his anger was still the leper, a marked man. Many people become angry at God today when they hear the truth of his word and feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit. They get annoyed and frustrated at God. They become angry when they hear what God really wants them to do. They get annoyed because it's different from what they thought and what they hoped they should be doing. Ron last week touched on Paul and Saul. Saul to Paul. In Acts twenty two sixteen, 16, we read this. And now what are you waiting for? Get up, be baptized, and wash your sins away, calling on his name. When I returned to Jerusalem and was praying at the temple, I fell into a trance and saw the Lord speaking to me. Quick, he said, leave Jerusalem immediately, because the people here will not accept your testimony about me. God calls for commitment, for us to follow his way. Some just want an easy ride, a ticket to heaven. Believe in Jesus, be baptized. These things are important. Let the Holy Spirit of God bless your life and bring transformation. Jesus calls us to respond in certain ways. Believe and be baptized. Let your sins be washed away. If it was good enough for Jesus. It's good enough for us. What does God require of us today? What does God require of me? Some of us get annoyed that the Bible requires more of them than they feel it should or that there are things that they need to do and address in their life. God's Word, friends, is a manual for life. It's the living Word. In 2 Kings 5, 13 and 14, Naaman's servant comes to him. Naaman's servant went to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do some great thing, would you not have done it? How much more then, when he tells you, wash and be cleansed, So Naaman, so he went down, Naaman the leper, this decorated military man with horses and chariots. So he went down and dipped himself in the Jordan seven times, as the man of God had told him, and his flesh was restored and became clean like that of a young boy. Who's glad we have wise people around us? We can be so stubborn. We can be so blind. We can be so lost. Don't underestimate those people that God puts in your life, that God puts around you. Naaman, go and wash. This is what God has said to do. Don't be so stubborn. Verse 15. Then Naaman and all his attendants went back to the man of God, went back to Elisha. 
He stood before him and said, Now I know that there is no God in all the world except in Israel. Now I know there is one true God. We've seen a miracle. Naaman's skin restored. The leprosy gone. He was just Naaman now. I like what Titus 3, 5 says. He saved us. Not because of the righteous things we have done, but because of his mercy he washed away our sins giving us new birth and new life through the holy spirit only god can do it only god can bring the transformation only god can bring the restoration only god can bring the healing Who's standing on that today? Only God. I'm trusting in you. Naaman was made clean. His flesh was restored and became like that of a, a young child, a young boy. The leprosy gone. He thought he knew how it was going to play out. He thought he knew how the prophet should come and do his thing. But God called for obedience. God called for effort. And God called for action. And it's the same for us today. God bless you. Amen.